Welcome to the next video in the mathematical logic sequence, talking about propositional logic, and this time talking about natural deduction. So we'll be studying a thing that is called a natural deduction system. Now, I know most people, I think, uh, learn a thing called a Fitch-style proof system, where you have numbered lines and a column for the statement and a column for the reason and so on. So, you know, one major way that it will be obvious these are slightly different is that they are not numbered lines. Uh, they will be kind of these tree-like structures. I personally find these much more confusing than Fitch-style proofs, but in any case, I'm glad to have an excuse to exercise my ability to do these natural deductions so that I'm not quite so dumb when it comes to these. Uh, but I may complain uh, frequently. Let's first talk about this turnstile. This is a single dash turnstile, right? So when we were doing semantics, which is to say talking about entailment, we had a double turnstile, and here we're talking about a single turnstile. So this one is for the syntactic portion of the picture. And, um, and so we use this when we want to say, that one set of formulae proves another set of formulae. And so because this is very syntactic in its nature, we will not immediately be talking about truth values and, and so on. We'll simply be talking about rules that take you from one kind of a written expression to some other kind of written expression. But intuitively, you do want to think that what we are claiming, right, we want to build our rules in such a way that sort of uh, the turnstile statements that we generate in this way can sensibly, credibly be said to, to uh, express that the set of sentences on the left proves the sentence that's on the right. So for one thing, we should hope that our rules, whatever they are, allow us or, or will give us the power to say that P1 proves P1, because it should just, in general, for every proof system, it should always be that if you have access to the formula P1, then in some sense it's like saying if you accept P1, then you accept P1, right? It's just this almost sort of like vacuously true kind of uh, thing that you want from a proof system. So, however, notice that I've already kind of slipped into, uh, right, it, we are supposed to have a set on the left-hand side of the turnstile. Now, in that example, I wrote just a single formula, but really, right, that's just kind of lazy writing for the more technically correct uh, writing where you would have the singleton set, but that just kind of gets obnoxious. Uh, and so here I have another, this set proves that, that formula, uh, which we should expect to be true, right? So, so we might even prove this relationship because it's one of the things that we, we really should expect uh, any proof system to be able to give us. So let's now introduce the notion of a sequent. A sequent is any expression of the form x, which is a set of formula, some set of formulae, on the left, turnstile alpha, alpha is some particular formula. So that is always called a sequent. Really it is nothing more than a pair where the left coordinate of the pair is a set of formulae and the thing in the right coordinate is a single formula. So that's really all that, right, fundamentally that's what sequents are but we will be interested in those sequence which our proof system derives, basically. So now let's see what the derivation rules are. So, uh, you know, you can kind of see a lot of this written out in more detail in the textbook, but every rule, is, you know, involves some horizontal bar. Above the bar, we write the premises which, right, like if that is satisfied above the bar, if we have some thing that allows us to write that, then in every such instance we are allowed below the bar to 
derive whatever the rule says you can derive in that setting. So one of them, just for instance, is this uh, initial sequence, right? So, so here you actually don't need anything above the bar. You are free to always just invoke this bar and below it, you are free to write a turnstile a no matter, sorry, alpha turnstile alpha, no matter which formula alpha is. So this is always available to us. We also have a sort of monoton uh, a monotonicity rule. I believe it is in the book abbreviated MR, monotonicity rule, telling us that if we have that some set proves some formula, right? If we have X uh, turnstile alpha, and if we have some other set, which is a superset of X, then, then we are next justified in inferring that this superset turns style alpha. Basically just saying that if you have any set which is able to prove a formula, well then a bigger set just has more stuff and it should only have monotonically more proving power, so to speak. Okay, so as an exercise in doing these tree-styled proofs, I think it might be a nice idea to just take each of the things in the textbook, which is not depicted in a tree style, it is given just line by line, but, you know, sort of, uh, that's not, <laughs> not exactly the same thing as a Fitch style proof, the lines aren't numbered and you don't have two columns and so on, but anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and, and take the, the problems, the examples that are in the textbook and let's redo them in the tree style, which is common for natural deduction. So um, I'm going to give a tree style proof of this first example given in the textbook. And so right, it's this x comma negation alpha proves uh, alpha. If you have that, right, if those premises, whatever x and alpha are, are enough to prove alpha, then it must follow that x is enough to prove alpha. It's basically, right, that's, that's kind of what this example is saying, so to speak. So, almost certainly, right, so, so doing this tree style proof, almost certainly, we're going to need to use the premise at some point. So I write it down, right? Just X with uh, negation alpha. By the way, when we, in the premises, when we separate sets with a comma, then we just mean union together. And again, I'm being lazy about uh, putting set braces around the negation alpha, just dropping those out of laziness, even though technically they're supposed to be there. Generally, bottom up or top down. Bottom up is often, I think, preferred, but in any case, I do want to just uh, show that it is at least possible to try to approach this top down. Uh, that might just kind of make a little bit more sense, uh, even though, you know, the bottom up method is a little bit more sort of foolproof, uh, always does the job, uh, but in any case. So just, just at least for one example, let's try to do this top down. So if I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what should my next move be? Then kind of look at where you are, which is with this X and a negation alpha in the premise, alpha uh, in the conclusion. And you kind of see that where I'm trying to go is in a sense, it looks like I'm trying to basically just drop the negation alpha. And you think, well, which of my rules kind of looks like that? And well, certainly, the uh, rule which shows that if you, you know, write X together with a sentence, proves some sentence, X together with its negation, proves the same sentence, then you can drop that sentence, right? There's basically a rule where you see that happen. So, let, so let's try to use that rule. And what that means is that I am hoping at some point to be able to write X together with alpha proves alpha. And uh, I guess I'm already doing it bottom up. Well, whatever, let's just keep going. So, uh, right, because effectively what this is saying is that uh, uh, once I know that I'm here, I would, the very next step is going to be to, sh to have uh, X proves alpha. And this would all be by way of 
the negation to rule, right? That's the name that it's given in the textbook. So I would like to arrive here, and I know that writing this left thing here is fine. It's one of the things that we are allowed to assume in this particular exercise. And I know that this thing is justified because of the uh, negation to rule, so all that's left is to find a way to justify having written that, and it's not yet justified, but you would think that it is justified merely by the fact that we know alpha proves alpha. That, of course, is itself justified immediately by the uh, initial segment rule, uh, or sorry, initial sequent rule. And so then what justification could we put here? Well, that would basically be monotonicity, right? That if, uh, if alpha all by itself proves alpha, then x alpha being a superset also proves alpha. And there it is, right? So this is the tree style, right? You can kind of see it looking like branches where the conclusion is the root of the tree and you get these branching upward sorts of uh, shape, shape to the proof. Okay, let's do the next one. And um, here, let, let's kind of approach it bottom up from the start. And so that kind of means that we're going to look at x proves alpha, the end point. And let's say, how could we possibly arrive here? Well, almost certainly, uh, or, or I guess that's not true, but you know, you brainstorm a few ways of what could come immediately before that could possibly arrive at this. Well, maybe it's in fact the same thing as in the previous uh, exercise, namely x together with negation alpha proves alpha. We know that this would be justified by the previous exercise if we could somehow arrive here. Now it's a little bit believable that we could arrive here because after all the premise, right, the thing that we're allowed to refer to at any time, this uh, x together with negation alpha proves beta and proves negation beta. By the way, that's what it means when a comma is to the right of a turnstile is uh, really that that is shorthand for the premises prove the first formula and they prove the second formula. But in any case, right, I mean, that, that thing that we are allowed to bring in at any time that we want to uh, has x together with negation alpha in the premise, just like this does. So it makes it kind of believable that this would be how maybe we're going to get this problem figured out. So let's try it. How could we arrive here? Well, one could pretty naturally guess that it would be because this proves a sentence and its negation. After all, we have a rule for exactly that sort of situation. And here's the tree proof, right? Because uh, we have right that the, this topmost uh, sequence is one that we're free to invoke because it is Right? It is given to us. It is a supposition of the problem. So uh, there it is. There's the tree. So uh, this is one final exercise in these tree proofs. This time I want to like just you know set out to prove the one that I mentioned way back at the beginning. So this alpha together with alpha right alpha arrow beta turnstile beta. Now the thing is our rules are you know, only use conjunction and negation. So, uh, you know, let's go ahead and write, like, I mean, we could come up with rules for, like, translating between the um, the various symbols, but let's let's just not even bother with that, and let's just change our goal to an equivalent goal that if we wanted to, we could make up these rules for translating between these different ways of expressing basically the same, same uh, semantically the same thing. So, uh, so let's, let's basically turn that arrow. Now, first we could turn it into a disjunction, and then uh, we could turn the disjunction into a conjunction. So at the end of the day, what we really want is actually to prove this uh, sort of sequence right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it bottom up, 
And by the way, you can even see that here I've already written out the entire uh, derivation. So if you want to skip just straight to the sort of end result, it's right there. But the rest of the video is sort of talking out how you could kind of come up with these steps in the first place. So I know that I'm trying to arrive at this and, you know, you look at all of the rules that you could possibly appeal to here and it's not perfectly clear which one's really going to help you out. But I guess, you know, the way that I sort of thought to do it, you know, here is, well, okay, look, we're trying to prove this simple sentence beta and I feel like I just need more stuff in my premises in order to get an entailment that, that's going to work out. Well, I know if I pack beta into the premises, then that's going to, you know, uh, uh, be really easy, right? That's, uh, in fact, I guess I should have that with uh, is and mr, right? So that is basically beta proves beta, and okay, this is a bigger set, so fine. So that's how I get that this thing with beta, right? So alpha negation, alpha conjunction, beta, ne sorry, negation beta, together with beta, that's enough to prove beta. So that makes some amount of sense. And, and right, sort of the plan is that if I could also make good on negation beta over here, then I would be able to use my uh, negation two rule. So let me just go ahead and aspirationally write down alpha negation, alpha conjunction, negation beta, negation beta. And so now this is what I need to kind of make good on. So somehow this has to come from somewhere. And so, you know, here it starts to get a little bit clear, right? Because you've got alpha already, you've got negation beta already, so that sort of morally, that's kind of like, you know, in the premises, you've got alpha conjunction negation beta, but we can also see that we already have the negation of that. So uh, presumably, right, we were somehow able to like get a contradiction, right? We're, we should be able to prove as much as a contradiction can prove, that is to say everything. So maybe using our kind of contradiction rules. So that kind of inspires that maybe I will try to prove some sentence and its negation. And it seems like, well, okay, I could certainly prove this negation, alpha conjunction, negation beta. And I also am pretty sure I can prove alpha conjunction negation beta, right? So I could prove that sentence and its negation using these ingredients. That's why on one side I've got alpha together with uh, negation alpha conjunction negation beta together with negation beta proves negation alpha conjunction negation beta using, right? So, so this basically, again, comes from is together with mr. Now, uh, I've already run out of room, so, uh, you know, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put some sentence right here, but I don't have room for, or not sentence, sequence, but I don't have room for it, so I'm going to write it up here. This is part of why I hate these tree proofs, is that they always are so uh, messy, ugly, and the particular steps that you take at any given point kind of don't make, like, I mean, you're... <laughs> There's so much guessing, and, uh, and it doesn't have anything like a feeling of logic. It doesn't feel like, you know, uh, it makes sense that this is the next thing that you would do. But anyway, this is, this is the system, right? It, it, you know, lots of logicians use this, so it's good to get good at it anyway. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to also be able to justify that alpha together with negation, alpha conjunction negation beta together with negation beta... Uh, proves alpha conjunction negation beta, but why would that be, right? So I've got to justify this up above. And so what would the justification be? Well, clearly it's got to have something to do with the fact that I've got alpha in here and I've got negation beta in here. So, you know, like, uh, you know, with that insight, you think, well, okay, look, this is a, con uh, this is a conjunction, right? Uh, so because it's a conjunction, uh, I've got a rule that allows me to derive conjunctions, namely the one that says if you can prove one conjunct and the other, then you get to infer the conjunction. 
So uh, let's you know basically just remark that alpha negation, alpha conjunction negation beta together with negation beta is enough to prove alpha, right? Because why? This is uh, ISMR, right? The initial sequence together with the MR rule. I'm, get, I'm writing it briefly. And, right, and that's because alpha is here and that's what we're proving. So that's the initial segment part and then the fact that this is a superset of that is the MR part. And then we could actually, in fact, uh, justify that this proves negation beta as well by exactly the same uh, rules, so I'm not going to waste space and time by writing uh, another justification of basically the same thing. And at this point, right, especially if I write a bar here, right, and what is this? This one is my conjunction one rule, so that is conjunction one justifying that particular bar. Looks like all the bars are fairly uh, well laid out. I guess, what, what, what's the justification for this bar right here? I guess it's coming from the fact that... Oh, right, right. So, I've, so I have that this collection proves a sentence and its negation, and therefore proves anything, in particular, uh, beta. So that means that I am using, what's the name of that rule, negation, uh, negation one. And then this one was ISMR as well. And so now everything is fully justified. And so that is the tree proof of this particular sentence.